Hi there, thanks for joining me this afternoon. So today I just wanna do a simple applique and fill stitch video. And the reason why I wanna do a simple one is because I'm also going to later do a more complex one where you can have different layers of applique touching each other. This, they're not gonna to touch. Whenever they have to touch in sew art, they have to be, um, digitized separately as different pieces and some parts deleted and then all joined together in Sew What Pro. So that's why this is going to be a simple version and then I'm going to do a more complex version in a couple days. Okay. All right. So let's just jump right in on this one. Let's go up here to file open and I'm going to use an SVG. I just also created a video showing you why SVGs are easier to work with than um, PNGs or TIFs or JPGs or any of that stuff because whenever you bring an image into SoArt it loses the simpleness of its colors because it's trying to convert it into something that it understands. So sometimes whenever you have something that looks like two colors to you, three colors for sew art because it counts the background, something that looks like two colors to you might end up having hundreds of colors. So if you're interested, I'll link that below in the description, that video about SVGs. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and grab an SVG. That one looks really cute. I, I probably should have picked one before I started this. <laughs> I want to find something easy. And I did this one for, actually, let's just go ahead and choose this one. All right. This one is super cute. And none of the pieces are touching, but it is all one piece, if that makes any sense. Okay, so as bringing it in as an SVG, I don't have to worry about all of this stuff. And I'm not going to use the wizard. I'm not going to use auto stitch or any of that stuff. Bringing it and bringing it, bringing it in as an SVG cuts down so many steps. So excited to figure that out. And I wish that I would have realized it when I first started making videos. I would have saved you guys tons of time, myself included. Okay, so here is our SVG file. Okay, and it's showing that we only have three colors, which is fantastic. All right, so I always like to just fill in the spots with the sew art colors. I feel like that just makes it work so much easier for sew art. Also, you wanna double check all of your little parts and see right here, there's a little square missing and it's specific to this file. It's really funny because when I was doing the other video, it came up too. So I think that it just has a little defect in how it was designed. I don't think it's something so art is doing. Oh my goodness. I have to really zoom in. Come on. There we go. Okay. Okay, and then let's go ahead and change the red. Make it a nice, pretty sew art red. Doesn't look like it changes it at all, but we just want it to flood it and feel good. Okay, and now I also am gonna need to resize my image. Okay, this is much too big for my hoop. And the biggest the height can be for my hoop is 3.9. So I'm gonna choose okay. All right, and we want to resize before we digitize so that the stitch settings don't have to try to reconfigure themselves, okay? All right, but we can zoom in again. That's all. We don't have to do anything else. It's so simple. I'm so used to having to finagle and do all kinds of crazy stuff, but no finagling. Oh, it saved my last stitch. No, I don't. I want to be fresh and new. Okay, so. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna choose the fill option, which is already chosen, the default. And we're not gonna change anything here, okay? You can, you can play around with the angle. I never ever have, but you can. You can play around with the angle, the length and the separation, 
and make it look your own. You can make it fuller. You can make it denser. There's all kinds of ways to make it more um, unique. So play around with that. All right. So there's the fill on on the flowers or on the stem. And you want to have the stem down first. So whenever you're digitizing, you kind of have to think about how it's going to sew out. And you want the stem down first so that whenever you do your applique, it kind of covers the top of the stem and actually looks like the flower is sitting on top of the stem. Okay, so we're done with that part. We're going to come over here and we're going to choose applique border. Okay, and what that means is it's going to border around the inside of this or whatever we choose. This if I wanted it to, but I'm not going to. Okay, so we want to make sure it says satin. We want to come over here to the height and make it about mm, 25 is a little small, but 30 might be too big, especially since it has to do these, these corners right here. And with sew art and the satin stitch, it's not going to come out perfect. So don't beat yourself up if it doesn't. You can go into Sew It Pro and change things around, or you can just accept it that it's cute and it's done, or you can keep trying also. Don't, don't give up, but also don't get frustrated and feel like you're doing something horribly wrong. You're not. Okay, so even though we chose the applique border, it's only showing up as one color, okay? So keep that in mind. Whenever we open it in Sew It Pro to view it, you're gonna see that it has all the layers, okay? Okay, so that is all there is to it, folks. Now we're gonna choose File, Save As. And you can save as, they let you save as an image if you want to again, if you did any changes to it or whatever, but you can't save it as an SVG again, which is a little discouraging, but it's okay. So cancel, and then once you hit cancel or you go to save, this is gonna come up next automatically. You don't have to do anything to get the embroiderer file to come up or the save embroiderer file screen. All right, I'm gonna save it to the de desktop. I'm gonna put applique flower and st filled stem. You don't have to be that. I don't think it's gonna let me do that. <laughs> Okay, so save. Then it's going to give us a cute little stitch out over here. Show us what it looks like, kind of. All right, so you can see that right here in the inner parts, we might have to do some changes if that kind of stuff matters to you. You can also choose the bean stitch and have a rough edge, and those are really cute too. Okay, so Sew It Pro is open. Let's go ahead and choose this open button. And we're on our desktop. And we're gonna choose the applique flower and filled stem PES file, okay? Choose open. All right, so in here, we can make sure that everything is okay, double check it. If you don't have texture turned on in Sew It Pro, turn it on because it's so cool. So you can see that it's gonna get a little jaggedy and iffy for me in a couple places. But I, as an embroiderer, don't really care that much. Um, I, I'm not embroidering professionally, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But if you are embroidering professionally, I know that there are other videos on YouTube and other amazing people on Facebook, Yahoo groups, Google groups, I think. There's so much help out there to help you figure out how to, to get your stitches looking really pretty, okay? So what I wanted to show you is whenever you cut, whenever your machine loads this design, it's gonna load it with these 10 steps, okay? And it's gonna be the number one is gonna be this, okay? It's gonna be the stem. Number two is gonna be the die line for this first flower, okay? You can reorder them to do all the die line at once, all the tack down at once, and then all the final stitch at once. Or you can do each flower individually like this is showing, okay? So um, the second stitch, when sh the die line is gonna show you where to put your fabric. Then you put your fabric down, it's gonna give you this tack down stitch. 
once the tack down stitch is done, you want to cut around the tack down stitch as close as you can without cutting the threads. And then um, you're going to press the fourth step and it's going to be your satin stitch at the end. Okay. So, and then you just repeat, 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 repeat all the way through to the end. So this looks pretty good to me. I'm not going to change anything. I'm not that good at Sew Up Pro yet to figure out how to do all that stuff. And I just haven't taken the time to get better at it. Um, but one other thing that I wanted to show you is if you really like this and, um, or that's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, I don't have my thing hooked up. Never mind. I don't have my, my, uh, my external hard drive plugged in right now that has all of my files on it but you can go in here and I don't know if it'll bring anything up but if you choose icons it's going to bring up your alphabets your fonts that you have yeah see I don't think it, it's just picking up everything on my desktop because I don't have anything hooked up right now but if you choose merge this is where I was going with this and you choose a file let's see if there's any other PS files here Okay, that works. You can merge it with Sewa Pro and you it, just pretend this is an alphabet. <laughs> you can put names here or on the side. Okay, 